All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the plateau here. William Kunis Field, Ashland High School for tonight's Friday night matchup between the Ashland Clockers and the Westwood Wolverines. I'm Rob Silver, joined tonight on the mic by Chase Abrams. Chase, welcome. Thanks, Rob. It's good to be back here on the plateau here on Friday night. Yeah, I uh, enjoyed the broadcast you and your dad did last week. I was a little under the weather, so I got to watch on the big screen. Hopefully we have a lot of viewers tonight. Uh, should be an entertaining game. It's opening uh, first game for the TVL Large. Uh, neither team has played in the TVL Large yet this year. Uh, coming in, Westwood 3-1 and one on a three-game winning streak. Ashland Clockers 2-2. Two and two. Any thoughts on tonight's game? Well, you and I talked about it right before the game. Really, only one common opponent to judge these two teams on, and that is Bellingham. Westwood got off to a rough start in their first game. Losing to Weymouth, but bounced back with a very close 17-16 win against that Bellingham Blackhawks squad, who the Clockers fell seven points short of last week, or so maybe it was six points. Yeah, Aaron Wolf kicking it off, and Westwood already with good field position. Nice, healthy return back to the 44-yard line. That looked like number 40... Tackle made by number 53, Josh Something. Lambert. <laughs> The other side of the field. We'll get but, that uh, name to you before the end of the game. Don't worry, folks. Yeah, I, I watched uh, Westwood. Looks like they've really been clicking on offense the last couple of weeks. They put up 39 against Medway last week in a 39-21 victory, and before that, 35-14. So uh, clockers haven't really been hurting on offense, but they've just been a little inconsistent. So we'll see what they can do in uh, shutting down this Westwood offense. A lot of playmakers, a lot of receivers that uh, quarterback Devin Hunt will uh, look for as they find a big hole right there and get a healthy five yards. Yeah, hole just opened right up for him. And yeah, this, this clocker offense struggled pretty early on, as did the defense against that Bellingham squad last week. We saw some late life from them, but ultimately yeah, unable to complete uh, the 14-point comeback, and they fell short. Yeah, it seemed like they just got off to a very lethargic in that first half, so they need to come out with some fire and really... Uh, yeah, make a statement early on. They can't let this team walk down the field. Oh, and there's a statement right there. Number 54, Matt Terry, one of the captains. Stonewalling him. Huge hit. Yeah, the running game, dictating that running game specifically, is going to decide the course of this game for the Clockers. They struggled. They've struggled all season in stopping it, really. So we're going to see how they can <coughs> handle this Westwood rushing attack. No Jack McDaniels this year. It should be noted. Kevin Botts is trots to the sideline. In comes number 45. For Ashland, that is Luke O'Brien. Player in motion, hands off to number 17. They stretch it out, but he's going to get the corner and then some. Pick up about nine yards and more importantly, a first down. That was uh, Charles Toole. He had a 24-yard touchdown on a uh, opposite handoff last week like that. Yeah, Tool on the end around there did not get the ball going full speed, but didn't really need to. He had a group of blockers in front of him really just leading the way, and he was pretty much untouched until he was shoved out of bounds after that nine-yard gain. Yeah, and Tool is one of uh, three or four receivers that will you know, be on the receiving end of uh, Devin Hunt's throws. And a lot of playmakers, a lot of their touchdowns last week, you know, just one, two, five yards downfield, but then the players broke it open. Another one, but uh, Ozolumba able to shed the block, cut the game to about three, four yards. Flag on the play. In the vicinity, usually, of holding. We'll see what the play, what the flag actually is. Yeah, hold just opened right up for the <coughs> running back there, so I think I think a hold isn't too. And it is a hold, yep. so that'll put them at uh, first and 20. Yeah, so you were talking about that, that deep wide receiver room that Westwood has. It's going to be, it's going to be a test for the Ashen Corners, uh, that's Tyler Pine, David Sales on the outside tonight. Yeah, David Sales, probably one of the uh, top, you know, corners on this uh, defensive alignment. So, see if he can live up to his uh, billing. Hunt back to pass, throws in the, in the flat, not too much there. Cam Antonuk looking for some help. 
excuse me, able to hang on, limit the uh, damage, six yard gain. Yeah, not the biggest guy, but he gets it done on both sides of the ball, wrapping up the ball carry before Matt Terry could get there to help him. Keeps him for, uh, what, just a one yard gain there. Uh, six yards. Six yards, yep. six yards, yep. excuse me. Second and, second and 14. Still second and long. Yeah, that's the thing you, on those little screen passes. You just got to make that initial, well, if you're the receiver, you got to make that initial guy miss, and Cam Antonuk did a good job of hanging on, not getting fooled. Yeah, don't necessarily have to hit him too hard. Just wrap him up, keep him from moving forward, and he did just that. Tighter lineup. Crowley over there, and that's who he's looking for. He hits him right on the money, and then some. That play's going to go for... Uh, 30, four yards. Yep, Jack Crowley on the receiving end of that out route. Had a lot of space from David Sales on that cut. Made the cut back inside after catching the ball and ran it down inside the 15. Westwood yeah. wow, within scoring distance early here. Yep. First and 10 on the 12-yard line just underway here. Under nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Handoff on the sweep again. And he's met by maybe, I think it was Ozalumba. I thought so, too. Yeah, he stood him up. Yeah, Ozalumba, another guy who, who does a lot of things both ways for this clocker team. Yeah, injured late in that game last week. Had to come out, but uh, healthy this week. And he definitely uh, is... One of the players that can make an impact on both sides of the ball. Yeah, it's especially good to see him healthy. Especially with the clockers missing Quan Amaral, Jerry Judge for this game and for a lot of this season. Yeah, that Quan Amaral injury in the first game just devastating on top of his opening week injury in the previous year. So second and seven on the nine yard line. Hunt fakes. No, he did hand off to number 21. It looked like Dante Martucci. Went right through that Ashton defensive line, broke through some arm tackles, and he's going to be either close or at the first down mark. I don't know if they're going to call it third and two from the about 10 yard line for Westwood here. Yeah, maybe even a long two. Yeah, they got to get down to the two yard line. Yep. This is probably four down territory, I'd have to assume. So, mm -hmm. blockers are going to be looking for not one, but two stops here this close to the goal line. So, Hunt. With, lined up with uh, Joseph Toady to his right. Hands it to Toady, goes to the right side. He pushes ahead, maybe in the end zone, and he is. He's able to push the pile and get into the end zone for the first score of the night. Joseph Toady from three, five yards out. Puts the Wolverines up, six to nothing. Extra point to follow. Yeah, so other than that, that big chunk play to the right side, from uh, Jack Crowley earlier on. Not an, not an overly impressive drive from Westwood, but they get into the end zone, they, they put six on the board, and we're gonna see how the clockers are gonna respond to this. This is junior Tom, Tom, Thomas Warren. And they fake for two, and that's good. Ozalumba got a hand on it, it was bobbled initially, and then still caught by number 47, or no, that's not 47. I think it was 80, 87. 87, that makes Murphy more O'Malley. sense. Sophomore wide receiver, first linebacker. Time, yeah. First time saying his name tonight. And, and that uh, two-point conversion set up the long snapper, Westwood. Interesting story. Joseph Vinci, he uh, just committed to play at uh, Notre Dame. He's a Whoa. preferred walk-on. And he is actually ranked as one of the top three long snappers in the country. So... Uh, you can, you can, not, see, you not can have see how that. important a long snapper is. When that ball gets there quick, it gives you the option, uh, as opposed to sometimes you see the snap and it just kind of barely gets there. By that time, the defense is all you know right on the ball. One, the, one, one of the more underrated players on the field is yeah. what you're saying here. Yeah, and exactly. I hope our audience so. is, is, is seeing just how in-depth your research goes into this before the games. <laughs> well, unlike you, I'm not running track during the week. Yeah. So... There's the kickoff by number 53, Olive Gannon. High bounce, Jason Crispin grabs it around the 20. He'll take it across the 25, but about to the 27 before finally taken down. A favorable spot to the 28. The we'll take it. Crispin a little shifty in open space, but just did not have the numbers on his side there. Yeah. 
First and 10 Ashland from their own 28 yard line. Westwood, Westwood looks like you know really well coached team, staying in their lanes, getting by their blocks. I mean, that offensive line was impressive. Like you said, it was not an impressive drive, nothing fancy. Ground and pound. But just, yeah, just wore them down. That one pass when they needed to. So Cam Antonuk in the spread offense. Yep, receivers stacked on both sides here for the clockers. Hands off to Crispin. And nothing doing there as he's going to lose two, maybe three yards. Just met immediately by a, a, a swarm of Westwood defenders breaking through that Ashland offensive line that's really very quite heralded. This is eerily similar to, similar to last week's start where they just could not control the line on either side of the ball. Yeah, it's only been one play. Let's not we're not let's not jump the gun here, Rob. <laughs> well, that's what happened last week. I so. know, I know. Somebody's got to get uh, a little angry. Antonuk throws it over to, is that Crispin? Looks like Crispin was in the backfield. Yeah. And it was that loss of another two yards. Tyler Pine on the reception there. And he caught it, had a receiver with him, and nobody blocking for him as two Westwood defenders just met him for a two-yard loss immediately. Ashton trying a little trickery early. Does not work. In fact, goes in favor of Westwood. And they've got a third and... and quite long, third and 14 it looks like on the first drive of the game. Yeah. So they switched around uh, Rudisil to the top of the screen here. See if they lob one up for him. Basketball player jump ball threat. Nope, they're looking the looking other near side. side. Throws. And it's uh, picked off. He's down right there though. Andrew Donegan there with the interception for Westwood. Looked, looking for uh, Jerry Judge, who's seen his first varsity action of the year. Just a little off on the throw, the timing-wise. And uh, like you said, Andrew Donegan comes away with the interception. He was on the ground when he caught it, so the ball's dead right there. And uh, two plays at, for a loss and an interception. I'd say that is not, uh, not what, what the doctor drew up. ordered. Yeah, so Donegan, right place, right time there on the interception and really not at all the start the clockers were looking for. Give up seven points and immediately turn the ball over. Westwood's going to take it over from the Ashland 40 now. Hunt drops back to pass over the middle. Intended for number 10, Andrew Weeman, but uh, about three yards over his head. Not the best pass by Hunt. He wasn't really open, Devin O'Brien. He did have good in, coverage. In close coverage there. But Definitely. yeah, that, that, that pass was uh, headed for nobody. So interesting to see them try a first down pass play with the amount of success the run had. I guess they saw that one big chunk play on the right side and decided to go for it again. Yeah, just trying to keep everybody off base. off. Toady for uh, five yards. Finally brought down by Ozalumba and uh, Mari Lee. O'Brien comes off and bots us back in for the clockers. Third down. Third down and five. Wolverines leading eight nothing as we tick under five minutes here in the first quarter. Rob Silver with Chase Abrams here on WACA TV. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. A couple as extra, much as we're enjoying bringing it to you. A couple extra men on the offensive line. It signifies the run. They're going to go oh. for it. And some angry running to get the first down, it looks like. And it's a Westwood conversion. Joseph Toady again. Big bodied back in the in the backfield. Wow, that's a lot of, a lot of bees there. Really showing his strength as he runs through a couple linebackers en route to the first down. Yeah, gets that momentum and can't can't stop him. Fumble. Good job recovering. Smart play by Hunt to uh, throw it away, and uh, we got a. Wonder if it might be an illegal man down. That field. was going to be my my guess. The other possibility. Offensive or defensive holding could be called here. See if he taps his head. 
or asking coach McKay if he wants to accept the penalty we still it is yeah there legal man downfield see that a lot of times when you have a Fumble bad snap, snap or right? something like that the uh, all the timing gets thrown off and somebody wanders downfield a little bit. Yeah, so really the only thing hurting Westwood so far this game is themselves. Couple of penalties. They didn't pay for the first one really. Let's see if Ashton can make them pay for the second. Hunt drops back to pass. Finds his receiver, but a little outside, and that's gonna fall incomplete. Coverage by David Sales. Yeah, they, they tried running the same play that they that they, they got the big gainer on earlier, and, and Sales really, his man beat him. I don't I don't know why he's playing so far back. He's got the speed yeah. to run step for step with these guys. I, I'd love to see more press coverage from Sales, that was a, as it looks like that's what he's going yeah. to line up to do now. It was a little different. He kind of took it to the sideline as opposed to curl, come back for it. But And another incomplete pass. That one intended again for Jack Crowley. Yeah, a little creativity with the, the the comeback route behind the line of scrimmage. He, he might have had a lane there, just couldn't handle the pass. And it's going to be third and long. And you have to assume this is going to be a passing play. So Westwood's got Thomas Warren to the bottom of the screen up top. And he's looking Warren's way. He's got to turn around and overthrown. Coverage by Tyler Pine. That's going to bring up fourth down and probably a punt, but uh, it's not a given based on the 30-yard line. Yeah, so this time Ashton able to hold for three downs, three incomplete passes from Westwood. And uh, I guess we've, we figured out the strategy to stopping this Westwood offense is force them into pass-only mode. So they're going to go for it on 4th and 15. A punt, if it rolled into the end zone, would only get him to the 20. So risk-reward. He's got to break a tackle. Ashley, and good job staying home. Second line of defense taking him down. Ozalumbo with the big tackle to stop him yep. about four yards short of the first. And Ashland's going to take over Jacob, on their own 20. Jacob Friel's on the coverage. Yep, the initial Ozil. tackle there. So they did what they had to do. They gave up 10, which was fine, and they'll take over. No damage done on the interception. So uh, Ashland gets their second offensive possession of the night. First one, not too impressive. Hopefully they can uh, right the ship here. Yeah, that crossing route looked dangerous that Westwood has had something brewing, but a couple Ashland defenders stood in his way. And he comes up about five yards short. Clockers take back over at their own 20. Two men in the backfield behind Anthony. Yeah, Zach Brennan, the up back. He hands it to Crispin, who trips and uh, on the cut and loses yardage again. Yeah, really just taken down by the turf monster there. At least, you know, from our angle. Yeah, the turf monster and the fact that Westwood was able to get somebody in the backfield. It's probably made him, you know, do a little bit more than he thought he'd have to. So yeah, we've talked about that. That Ashland offensive line is one of the strengths of this team. Nate Cavanaugh anchoring that unit, but Westwood so far having their way with them. Yeah, Brian Ramirez center. This time he's got Crispin lined up to his left on the sweep. Ozalumba cuts it back up right into three Westwood players. Picks up about three yards with and. The first positive yardage play of the, I was gonna of the say, game. Yeah, small the small clockers. plus to look at is they've gained positive yards for the first time. However, it is still third and seven. Yeah, they actually gained four yards on that. Yeah, it felt like he might have had a lane there, but he cut he cut he very cut sharply right upfield yeah, and ran, I ran thought, right into a group of Westwood players. Yeah, I kind of thought he might continue outside and try and string it out in that hole. So third and seven. 2.32 to go here in the first quarter. Clockers trailing eight to nothing to the Westwood Wolverines in this Tri-Valley Large matchup. Antonuk steps back to pass, he scrambles. He's got Robbie Rudisil 
And that's enough for a first down. Just barely over that first down marker. Great field awareness by Antonick and Rudisil to get that completion for just one or two yards past the marker. Rudisil quiet on the stat sheet last week, really not seeing a lot of targets. He had seen a lot uh, in the second week against Whalen. Didn't use him much, didn't need to use him much in the Neshoba game. And uh, just a couple targets late last week. And they go to the gunk offense. Pitch to Ozalumba, squeezes through for about two, three yards maybe. Yeah, back to Rudisil for a second. It felt like last week Anthony threw him a few jump balls. None of them really connected, and then after that it was kind of, you know, he was just kind of a no-show the rest of the game. How, how do you feel about this gunk offense? I'm curious to, about your take on him. I like it. Uh, it. It's a different dynamic without Quan Amaral. Yeah. It's just such a different different uh, feel to it but and really without Andrew Molesky if you really want to and he's got some room he pushes it up to the 40 just about a yard short of a first down pick up a 6 or 7 carry by number 3 Kevin Ozolumba to bring up a third and yeah, I guess I've never really been a huge fan of the gunk offense but really I guess you can see the the, the efficiency that it can have on that previous play Big yep. eight, you know 6 7 or 8 yard gain there I talked about it when I did the, the I had Dylan Drozek up here doing the broadcast, and you know a lot of he's a good kind mis of misdirection, and they draw him off sides. It's number 53, Oliver Gannon, who gets tricked, and that's five yards and a first down. Clockers move it up to the 45-yard line. Yep, Antonick with a good hard count there to get themselves a free first down, and it's their second of the drive so far. They're inching near uh, closer to midfield and closer to that Westwood end zone. As we get the flyover by the flock of Canadian geese, always a good omen. Well, then there are a lot of good omens around National High School because we see those all the time. A pitch to Ozalumba. Finds some room. He breaks it to the outside. He's got one guy to beat. 30. Down to the 20. The 10. Down to the three-yard line. Kevin Ozalumba. For 48 yards. Ozalumba's field vision on display there as he runs around the entire Westwood defense down the near sideline and tackled inside the five. It's the biggest play the Clockers have had in three weeks. Actually, 52 yards. They're going right back to that. They got <laughs> Omari Lee lined up behind. That's pitched to Crispin. Gets down to about the two-yard line, maybe one yard on that play. Crispin. Crispin for a yard there. They go right back to the gunk offense. Not surprised they use Crispin. Uh, <laughs> Ozalumba probably looks needs like a little spread, bit of a breather. You know, this offense looks like they're spread out a little further. Yeah. Usually you see like Crispin and Ozalumba like tighter. Fakes the pitch, rolls to his left. So many moving pieces in this offense. The ref comes in. And uh, they're going to yeah, be a little Antinuk short on the on the keeper down to the one. And that's going to run out the first quarter. So when we come back from the break, it's going to be Ashland Clockers third and goal from the one yard line. You're watching Ashland High School football here on WACA TV. We'll be back in a moment. Nothing is start of the second quarter. They go back to their regular offense set. Three receivers. He fakes. Gets it over to Tyler Pine in the flat, and it's good for a touchdown. Yeah, beautifully done there From by Anthony. Three Antonick. yards out. Sold the fake to the right, threw it left. Tyler Pine had nothing but green turf ahead of him as he cruised into the end zone. Clockers put their first six on the board, and they're within two. Looks like Clockers are just going to go for the extra point here. Plenty of time. Aaron Wolf, the kicker. It's down and perfect. Kid's got a leg on him. He does. It's just a sophomore. It's still going up when nice it went hole, through. Nice hole by Friels. So it's eight to seven. It gives us a Second to uh, thank our sponsors again tonight. Probably may have seen some of the ads, but uh, want to thank Mr. Handyman, 
Sponsored in part, as we said, by Mr. Handyman, the home improvement professionals. They're your one-call solution for a wide range of home maintenance and repair needs performed by fully insured technicians. Located right here in Ashland at 200 Butterfield Drive. Give them a call at 508-231-4639. Request service at mrhandyman.com. Good work. And a quick shout out to uh, Townhouse Pizza for Always. feeding the crew tonight. You enjoying your grape soda tonight, Rob? Have you have you I, had it yet? I always say that you know that's right, like my it it's yeah. a celebratory type of uh, <laughs> type of drink. But you don't just have it after wins. I heard you tried it last week. I did try I, it last week. Like, I, I don't know what he what he sees in it. I don't get it. That I don't. Hurt. I don't get I, it. I like that. <laughs> I don't get it. It's a toy that becomes. Yeah. It's a skyscraper that becomes uh, the movie big. Gotcha. Uh, Aaron Wolf, a little pooch kick, came up. Fielded nicely. Going to try to reverse fields here, and he's got some room. Somebody's got to make a make a tackle here. And Charles Toole. We've mentioned his name a couple times already. Just yeah. running in between clocker defenders until he's finally brought down on the clocker 40. Number 18, Jake Linehan, yeah. finally. The, the junior. One to, yeah, one to bring him down. Or sophomore, that is. Yeah, first and 10 from the... But Westwood taking over in, in great field position. So they shut him down from uh, the 40 last time. Two yards closer. We'll see if they can do it again. Again, Westwood kind of, not again, but Westwood did kind of shoot themselves in the foot with that little penalty that put them behind the eight ball. Hunt, handoff to Toady. I would expect nothing less. He's got clockers dragging him backwards, and he still plows forward for four or five. Yeah, they got to get, they got to start tackling low and getting defenders in front of him because he is moving the line of scrimmage at will right now. Second down and six. I mean, we we get some big guys in there, but, you know. Kavanaugh, Terry. Yeah, Kavanaugh's in there. Omari Lee, Brian Ramirez. Like you said, Terry, see, Ramirez might be on the sidelines right now. It's just with, with Toady getting it with a full head of steam. Vince Marmelstein he has been, has been the, tough uh, this time. On the line as well. I'd love to see them blitz Marmelstein. Hunt steps back to pass. Antonick bearing down on him. He throws a quick check to down Crowley, to his receiver. I believe. And this time he caught it. It's going to roll just short of the first there. It's going to be third and about one for Westwood. Third and one for Westwood. And once again, four down territory at this spot in the field. Too far for a field goal, too close for a punt. A lot of these passes not coming in really high. They've got to get their arms up, try and knock something down, too. Maybe getting uh, Hunt's field of vision. Yeah, he's, he's a pretty tall quarterback, but like you said, you know, not a lot of power behind these those throws. Toddy runs Just into a crowd momentum, of players. Though. Well, let's see. No, this this uh, near judge is going to short spot him short, maybe even a, a loss. Fourth down signal is up, huge, and yeah, it looks yeah. like he lost a little bit, like you said. So a big stop for the clocker defense, but can they do it one more time will be the question as the offense stays on the field, or I'm guessing is staying on the field for Westwood. Yep. And this time it's uh, almost two yards. They got to get just it's a long two. Yeah, they got to get to the Ashland 28 for the first down. Yep. Stacked backfield. Three receivers back Hands there. Hands off deep. Outside. Oh, hand. they strung him out and they get the tackle. Big fourth down stop for the Clockers. They were ready for the outside handoff. Met him in the backfield, tackled him for another loss. They went to their go-to guy, Charles Tool, who's been doing it all night, but that time he just uh the tiptoeing back backfired, you know. The yep. Clock is able to get in there, and uh, that was the difference. Yep, Tool who got them all the way to the Clocker 38 is unable to get them past the 30, and the Clockers take over there for a drive of their own. Yeah, so uh, we're in the second quarter, 9.30 to go in the game, and Ashland taking over, trailing by one. Dunk formation eight, again. Seven. Omari Lee coming in late here. Pitch to Ozalumba. Squirts through yep. for about seven, eight yards. That was actually Jason Crispin. 
keeping his yep. pads low and running through the Westwood Thank defender you. who brings him to the ground. It's a big six or seven yard gain for the Clockers. Yeah, why do I have these binoculars if uh, <laughs> I can't even uh, tell the difference between a 23 and an eight? Oh, you know, they're, they're very similar numbers, Rob. Give yourself some credit. Uh, you're, you're too kind. You're <laughs> too kind. Good upbringing. Yep, and not, not at all a hint of sarcasm this time in crisp, there. Crispin again. Bodies in front of him. He's going to maybe get one. And they're calling for the first down. He gave him the first down. Got farther than I thought, clearly. Yep. And looks like, yeah, looks like they're going to spot it enough for a first down. Crispin with a big first down conversion there. Yep. And, and this o clocker offense has found some momentum behind the gunk formation. Old reliable as they go right back to it. Yeah, these uh, three, four, five yard runs and then you hope to get something like Ozalumba did where you break one for a big one. Fake as uh, he can't, Cam Antonuk keeps it, rolls up the middle for about three yards. Antonuk also capable of breaking it as he did the first week, yes. taking and last for uh, 64 yards. How long? Yeah, he had a good one It was one about 44 week. yard touchdowns. So I, I called it a mad dash to the pylon. Oh yeah, where he it was breaking kinda, yeah, all the runs. Broke yeah, a few tackles. There. Broke yeah. some ankles Going on the way, way, and yeah, that was what uh, really put some put some life back into this clocker offense, and yep. that had been pretty dormant up until that point. Gunk formation again came into the center. They're trying to lull him to street. They <laughs> may they may uh, at some point throw throw a pass as Ozalumba. Yep, running strong up the middle for five yards brings up a third okay, and one. That is number twenty three. Good call, Robin. It looks like they, based on the spot. Uh, just They're going to be just short, short. Yep. just short of the first down, right on that 50-yard line, maybe a, maybe half the football behind it. So they might try your uh, QB Philly, sneak. Philly special yeah. that you... Are they allowed to push from behind in high school? Yeah, I guess you can, although some of the refs don't like that. Looks but like they a, do a allow line. it. Ozalumba, wow. I think he got, he got about three-quarters of a yard. Oh. We'll see. This ref down here is saying it's a first down. It's been a while since I've seen a player get pushed backwards like that. My goodness. Based on the forward momentum. Westwood's arguing their case. It looks like the refs now they're gonna are going to spot, spot it short. pretty close. He, he, did, he did get almost a full yard. Yeah. It looked like a, a lineman on Westwood might have moved a little bit pre-snap, but no call there. Coach McKay furious either with the spot or wants it wants a measurement at least, and he deserves that. Gives him time to talk to his team. Are they gonna are they gonna bring the chains out? I don't think it was a don't I don't think it was a timeout. Yeah, it's just a measurement. Westwood's got to get out of the way. This is <laughs> typical of uh, happens all the time. So we. See. They barely made the first down on the previous set, yep, and it chains. was right at the. It's they got to be right at the yard line, uh, right at the hash line, and, and they're not. But the this yardage markers aren't always a hundred percent. Honestly, they've got an Ashland JV player yeah. carrying out one of them. I don't it's know why he doesn't. About a football length, length of a football, just barely short there. So we're gonna do the hard count. See how that goes. Worked the first time. Why not? Now they're expecting it, though. That's the <laughs> difference. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the coach said to him, "Hey, watch the hard count." <laughs> and I think they'll run it all the way down on the play clock and and take a timeout. It's possible. It seems like a pretty short yard. I wouldn't be too surprised if they did just oh, they're go definitely, for the conversion. They're definitely going to go for it. It's just a matter of whether they do it here it, or you know, they try, try to mess around yeah. a little bit first. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. All right, waiting for the refs to start said play clock. Yeah, they're fixing the chains yeah, over on the get other side. Real quick. Yeah, I just heard somebody say, watch the hard count. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once, right? Nope. Plenty QB of, sneaking plenty of with, yardage yep. there by Antonuk. Nice and easy. That big, powerful offensive line, headlined by Nate Cavanaugh, moving the pile for Cam Antonuk to get that first down. And the clocker yep. offense will stay on the field. Yep, Brian Ramirez at the bottom of that pile as well, and Matt Terry. 
Ramirez coming out as his helmet came off. He's going to come out for a play. First and ten from the Westwood. Mark Marmelstein yards. into the lineup. The sophomore getting some varsity experience, varsity playing time. Beautiful night. Beautiful night here. No wind whatsoever. About 70 degrees, maybe 68 now. It was 70 at game time. A lot of humidity, though. It was, a, it was It's too hot to wear a sweatshirt. I realized that a couple times today. It was a little bit in motion. A late snap. <laughs> There's that oh, throw, boy. and it's picked off. It's picked off at this time by number 13, Thomas Warren. Same uh, second interception of the night for Warren. Pulled the Mac Jones right there. Just bad decision. Yep, good play design, but the receiver was never really looking in the pass. Wasn't going to find him anyway. That's the so, thing. That's yeah. the thing. It's it's got to fool them, and they weren't fooled. So at that point, you yeah. kind you really have to eat it. It's just, just tough. Like you you make a stop, you score a touchdown, you make another stop, and then the offense was rolling right around midfield, and that 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 play really just the reverse of what you're trying to do. So Westwood's going to take over. Uh, on the on the clocker side of the field now. Cooley in motion. Yeah, Cooley. again, good job. Ozalumba oh. takes him down. A strong tackle there, and it's going to be a loss of three or four. Yeah. You mentioned Tool, I guess, kind of, you know, tiptoeing around Ashland defenders earlier. It hurts him once again here as Ozalumba sees his opportunity and drives him into the turf. Ozalumba's as strong and as quick as probably anybody out there. Pound for pound. Yeah, he's going to be a contributor on this team for and a little while. Yeah, and he's just a sophomore. So f approaching five minutes here in the second quarter. Westwood, second and 13. Hunt back to Blitz. pass. Terry. Oh, and deflected as he pass was intended for Tool again. Yeah, Terry generating some pressure there as, as Ashland dialed it up a little bit. Pass was knocked down very close to a Jason Crispin interception, but it falls to the turf, and it's third and long for Westwood once again. Yeah, it looked like there were about two or three clockers in the area, depending on where it ended up with the deflection. Any, anybody could have got it. So Ashland's defense. Three uh, receivers to the uh, left of Hunt. He looks that Five way. Five-man pressure again. Nate Cavanaugh on the backfield. Great defense by Tyler Pine. Ball skills on display there. A lot of whistling we've around the line of scrimmage, and we've got a flag. Field. I've got to assume it's going to be an offensive holding here. As long as it's not roughing the pass, if they were in on him. We'll see what the call on the field is. It's the refs discussed among themselves. See which sideline they go to for... Uh, They're going to come to the clocker sideline as McKay looks for an answer. Ah, uh, illegal hands. It's going to go against Nate Cavanaugh. It's a tough penalty on, on, on third and long. Illegal use of the hands. It's 10 yards. I don't think it's an automatic first down Shouldn't like be. it is in college or NFL. Still a much more manageable Absolutely. Third down. Third I down didn't. I didn't see specifically what they they were referring to, but uh, yeah, the, it was on. The, they said 79 Kavanaugh, but yeah, we did see him get into the backfield, so might have been something involved. Toddy there. spins ahead for five yards and a first down. Yeah, that's a been well, coaches, four yards. Yeah. But coaches are gonna love that move in the film room tomorrow. Spinning, keeping your momentum and falling forward, knowing where the pylon is. Great field awareness for Toddy. Looking for the trainer. There's an interception. I was watching Ozalimba taking it to the house. Off the. Did he pick that off? He did. He read the play from the start, saw a little bounce outside route behind the line of scrimmage, saw it the whole way, jumped in the passing lane, and took that pick back to the house. Huge play from Oza Lumba, who's been the player of the game for the Clockers so far. He gives them their first lead of the night. It's 13-8. to 
I was focused. I didn't even know the play was starting because the looking. Unfortunately, uh, Vince Mermelstein came off the field injured. They were looking for the trainer, and I was looking around as well. And uh, play continued. Kevin Ozalumba just doing it all been tonight. A, been a man on a mission. That was a really a heck of a play from the sophomore. That puts uh, Ashland on top, 13 to eight, extra point pending. And a flag here. Flag. Not sure. Okay. Procedure call. So that's going to move it back. Yeah, Aaron Wolf onto the field. Five so they yards. Will, they will go for one instead of two. Or so it seems. Right. <laughs> to give them Not a six-point lead. Equivalent to a 25-yard field goal. Straight and true. Point. Yes. Right down the middle for sophomore Aaron Wolf, and it's a 14 to 8 lead, 4.18 to go here in the first half. So Kevin Ozalumba with the key play on the pick six, giving some life to this Ashland squad. I cannot, I can't overstate just how important that play was for the Clockers. Kind of scuffling a little bit. That I think. If, if this ends up being a clock or win, that's the play we're going to look back on as the momentum shifter. Can't wait to see the uh, to the re see the replay <laughs> when I get home tonight. That's what happens. I, I'm just so just the one time, you know. You, well, you're, yeah. you're very concerned for the well, player's that, safety. That's, that's exactly that's a good what thing. it was. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. I didn't even know if the, no, the play was going to continue. I, the way he, he came off the field. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's all right. Hopefully he's, yep. Been a huge contributor. Absolutely, one of the top linebackers on this team. Did he have a touchdown last week? Or I can't I'm remember. Not sure. I don't think so. so. So Wolf with a little squib kick, possible free ball. Well, West would get a little lucky there as that ball bounced right off one of their players, but another another Westwood player able to fall on it. However, no yeah. big return this time. It's the first time yeah. that's happened so far tonight. And Westwood will start in their own 37-yard line. Yeah, it was number 87, Murphy O'Malley, the sophomore, who alertly fell on it. Yep, that was the that was the same kid who caught the two-point conversion earlier this game. In case anyone was confused as to the 14-8 the score, uh, yes. Westwood faked the extra point on their first touchdown, instead threw it, and it was O'Malley who caught it for those extra, that extra point, extra two points. So Westwood taking over on there. Some of their worst starting field position of the night, I think. That's what I was 36. saying. 36. No big return Oh, and there's time. a hit. Oh. Is there any Cam receiver Antonick. in the area? <laughs> a little quarterback on quarterback. Where's the flag? You're thinking it's intentional grounding? Yeah, there's nobody even close. Yeah. I'll have to watch the replay on that one too, I guess. No flag on the play. Looks like McKay thing is, is, is agreeing with you on this one. Yeah. Ah, they're going to have a conference. I think talk, they're talk also talking about why the clock was still running. Oh, that too? Okay. Incomplete pass. A lot going on. They're going to put 15 seconds back on the clock to make it four minutes. Even. Good call. There's going to be no flag on the play, it looks like. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, well, but it's okay. <laughs> but a Heck of a blitz by Cam Antonick there. Very nearly coming away with the sack and probably should have still gotten <coughs> that yardage lost. But They're definitely getting in the uh, backfield a lot absolutely. quicker. Absolutely. Illegal use of hands or not. A little pitch a play. Pitch we were waiting to Tony. for this. Oh. It just, you got nothing. Chased down by Botsis, number 69, Kavanaugh, and Ozalumba, and Lee. Amari Lee, the one who uh, finally knocks him down to the turf. And it's third and 10. 
This Westwood offense was kind of rolling on that first drive, really unable to gain any traction since then. So it's a passing down, see if uh, Ashley can capitalize again, knowing the pass is coming. That's over the middle. Beautiful throw. That's to uh, number 13. Is that uh, Thomas Warren, Warren for Westwood? Flag on the play. Probably a hold. Was there a flag? I think. I thought I saw some laundry. Yep. Right behind Omari Lee. There's a flag on the play. Oh, I didn't even see that. Good. Nice work. Nice use of the binoculars there, Rob. I saw it without the binoculars. Yeah. Oh, the binoculars even, even more just, impressive. Then. Binoculars were just. Well, I heard the whistle <laughs> and. Yeah. A lot of waving, so but I. So we'll see. Big conference here. Maybe that's the only way they can uh, stop this pass rush is with a hold. Yeah, we talked about earlier how West would kind of get in their own way a little bit. They'd been victimized of their own penalties with a few third and longs early on. Looks like they could have yet another one here. Wow. Second best, second best hands. throw of the night for the clockers on that uh, McKay headset. <laughs> went, went about 10 yards. <laughs> that was illegal. Yep. Unbelievable. I mean, you see illegal use of the hands maybe once every two or three games. And then say, you see I it couldn't twice. couldn't tell you the last time in, I saw it in a high school game. Yeah, twice in one quarter. It's crazy. I mean, you probably can call it on any, any play if you want, similar to holding. Wow. Oh, beautiful pass in the by bucket. Hunt. My goodness. Andrew Weeman threw that over three players, two Ashland and one of his own, and just <laughs> right in the breadbasket for his receiver on a little corner route down the near sideline, and Westwood's got something brewing here. This is yeah. the most efficient passing game I've seen from them so far. Yes, kick can throw the ball, no doubt about it. Devin Hunt looks like his uh, brother is a freshman on the squad. We'll see if he's going to be a quarterback of the future. So Hunt calls for it. Hand off to Todd. He's got a big hole to the left. Hit hard by Matt Terry and driven to the turf. It's going to be out of a, uh, about a four or five yard gain for Westwood. Closer to seven. Oh, wow. I saw where the ref was running out, but yeah, it looks like you're right. They're going to spot it a little bit farther up there. So. Second and five for Westwood. Good job mixing up the play calls. Toddy, Toddy. Uh, Limping to the field. Yeah, hobbling off the, the field. Line. Definitely do not we'll want to see, see if, that. Yeah, we'll see if that becomes a factor in their play calling. Westwood definitely in no hurry as they look to milk the clock if they are going to score. 2.29 to go. See if Ashland uses some timeouts based on this play. Hunt. Showing pressure again. Different Hands running back in the field. 21. Ah, there's a holding play. A holding call. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. It's probably going to negate that 16-yard, uh, 18-yard run. Dante Martucci. Probably not going to be too thrilled with that call, I have to imagine. Yeah, they owe us. <laughs> a little makeup call. There it is. Holding against Westwood. So that's going to make it second and 14. 10-yard penalty. They bring up a second and 16 No, they, it's, the PA announces hit second and 16. It's That goes back 10 yards from the uh, previous so like 14 or 15. Then, yeah. yeah. Let's see. I don't. doesn't really. There. Now they're moving the ball back. Okay. Oh, it looks like. All right. That's a second and 10. They only moved it back five yards, but I was under the so impression the whole, that holding was 10 yards. If it's beyond the line of scrimmage, then it's a spot foul. So gotcha. it's probably about okay. two, three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Again, to Martucci. Gets the outside. Chase down, was that Terry? I couldn't tell. Yeah, it looks yeah, like Matt, Matt Terry. Terry. Good Showing job. off the speed. He plays on the edge of that defensive line, but he can run down the, the backs if needed. A lot bigger than Martucci. Grabs on, rolled. Perfect tackle from Terry along the far sideline. It's going to be third and eight. 140. Wouldn't, wouldn't mind a uh, timeout here to preserve some clock, see if we can get get something going. We do receive the ball to start the second half, so. Wouldn't hurt to pour it on, though. Depending on what happens here. Hunt back to pass. Just. That's going to stop the clock for you, Rob. Yep. Incomplete pass along the far sideline. It's fourth and eight from the 20. 
And what is the move if you're Westwood right now? That was intended for Thomas Warren. What do you think they're going to go with here, Rob? I mean, it's got to be a pass, but like... I mean, that pass was... It looked like they were, weren't on the same page. Warren yeah. kind of was ready to run upfield or turn in, and it was an out pattern. I kind of feel like but a draw play. I don't think, because it's fourth down, I don't think they can yeah. risk a uh, running play. It's just, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's always the potential of a draw play breaking big. It's, it's not going to be one. He's, he's back to pass near sideline. How about a push off? No. Ozalumba in coverage. Andrew Pass Weeman. just went right over him. Mossed him a little bit. Weeman on the near sideline. So it's going to be a touchdown right near the 1 minute and 10 second mark for Westwood. And that is going to be a little bit of a momentum shifter going into the half unless the Clockers can get something going. Tie game pending this extra point slash potential fake extra yeah. point. Number 62, as we said, Joseph Vinci, the long snapper. Let's see the zip. There it is. Yep. Wow. A lot and of speed uh, on that snap. Looked like he got a hand on it, too. The <laughs> kick was low, but it's good. It's 15-14. to 14. Westwood Wolverines going on top just before the half. Uh, Notre Dame football program's no joke, so we, we wish him the best of luck in the future. It's not often you meet a long snap recruit, Rob. All right, Clockers are going to regroup here. They've got 70 seconds to work with. Do you think they're going to they're going to go for a touchdown here? Or are they just going to run the clock out? They've it got, depends they've on got the all return. their timeouts. Depends on the return. Okay. There's no no reason not to. Should be Ozalumba and Crispin back there, and it looks like that's what's going to be the strategy for the Clockers. I expect this kick to go to Crispin. That's that's where most of them have gone. Potential squib kick here. We'll we'll see what Westwood goes with. Yeah, I, I would expect them to kick away from Ozalumba and, you know, definitely can't blame them towards Crispin or even bounce one into this. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm expecting a squib kick yeah. here. Let's see. Out of bounds. It's going to give us some uh -oh. good field position. That brings it up to the 40. Wondering if that's what they were trying to do there. It's going to give Clockers at least decent field position. They got 60 yards to to yeah. go in 70 seconds. I think that's pretty doable. It's enough time. Enough time to do some damage. Antonuk's just got to kind of stay within himself. Oh, re-kick. Is that, is that what the penalty is in high school? Are they moving him back at all? Or yeah, no? they'll move him back and make him re-kick. Like five yards, ten yards, let's see. Yep, he moves back five yards and goes again. <laughs> okay. Why not? The clock doesn't move, so still a minute 10. The clock doesn't start till the receiving team touches it. Those middle blockers should look alive. This could be coming to them. All right. I was trying to angle it towards oh, near oh. sideline this time. Good job by oh. Luke O'Brien. A huge hit. Caught and immediately laid out by Westwood. And they're There's calling a flag a, on the play immediately. Another they, flag. Calling a penalty. A legal hit. It looked like he led with Might the shoulders. Might be targeting. A, a I know. Huge hit. Defenseless receiver, probably. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Because, oh, man, I, I hope he's okay after that. That was brutal. He's up. Got to give Luke O'Brien a lot of credit because he <laughs> knew he was going to get tagged. He, he got back up, though, which is great And, and great he to still say. went up there and, uh, you know, went to went to grab it. I mean, he couldn't he couldn't leave it. It's not a punt, so it is a uh, live ball. Multiple flags thrown on the play. Referees just trying to. Hopefully there was nothing. Yeah, hopefully there was nothing on Ashland with some any retaliatory type of thing. But. Well, Ashland's taking the field. No call from the refs just yet. 
Westwood's been out there. Three seconds off the clock. What's targeting? And he's ejected. Wow. It's a positive response from the Ashland fans. I understand the call, and I and I like I like the fact that they're trying to protect him, but it just looked like a hard hit. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a hard tough hit. Tough to say he, it, but I, 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 I do I agree with you. I couldn't. You said it too. You know, he <laughs> led with his shoulder. It didn't look like he led with the helmet. But hey, we'll De we'll take the break. Yeah, defensive you know, receiver. Had, you know what? Like, I guess you know. I mean, he's the receiver. He's he's catching the ball. What do you do? He is. He is what putting do do? himself what into that position. What are you supposed to do? Give the guy like a, a little hug. Yeah. Um, but we did have two illegal use of the hands plays. One that ended up, you know, keeping that drive alive, yes. and leading to a touchdown. Ultimately, so. yeah. Now, fortunately, nobody's really hurt. Nobody got hurt from it, and. Um, No, the, the call is the call. They won't reverse it. And Ashley now takes over on the Westwood 40-yard line with a minute seven to go in the first half, trailing 15 to 14. And uh, I think they have all their timeouts. They I don't do. think either team has used a timeout. So Which is kind pretty of shocking considering there's 66 seconds to go in the half. But, yeah. 40-yard yeah. line, I don't think this is the time for the gunk formation. I'm going to be honest. I disagree. Okay. Gunk formation anytime. Ozalumba gets the handoff. I'm okay with them giving it to Ozalumba, but that time just one or two yards, not really what you're looking for. Clock continues nope. to run. We've seen, you know, sometimes you, th there's tight in there so tightly that if you are able to squirt through the first line of defense, then you're gone. And we saw, you know, right. with his 52-yard yeah, run before. Yeah. So. See what happens. Pitch to Crispin. That Met goes nowhere. Immediately by number 10, Crowley. Andrew Weeman. And Weeman, yeah. Immediately some flags on the play, or some whistling. Timeout. Yeah. Timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked down for a second. I heard a lot of whistling, and I wasn't sure what was going on. So 38.8 seconds left. Timeout. And we'll see what uh, McKay's going to call. You kind of have to throw it here. 38.8 seconds to go? Well, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to backpedal. You don't have to throw it. Cause, it's preferable. Because if you run the ball, you get four or five yards, you still have the two timeouts. You want to keep the drive alive. You you throw out the best play that you think is you know going to work. Whether If it's a run, it's fine. If it's a pass, then pass. I, I don't think any – nothing's off the table. It's not a must-throw type yeah. of play. My thing is with, uh, with with throwing the ball is that – it's it's about it's been about as hit or miss as you can get so far tonight with three pass attempts from Cam Antonick resulting in two interceptions and a touchdown. So uh, it's kind of been all or nothing so far for the Clockers. Let's see if they can find somewhere in between yeah. that. But hopefully, you know, closer to that touchdown side, right? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see. And and actually, Robbie Rudisill's not even in there. I was going to say, I'd like to see Rudisill maybe on the receiving end. They got Evan Noel. Yeah, the, they got the, the height. Let's see if they go down his way. Down here, he fakes, pump fake. Double he was held. held. He was held. There's the flag. Oh, there's the flag. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Evan Noel, as we right said, there. in the game, totally fooled Travis Boger for Westwood, who had to grab him around the waist right in front of the ref. Very clean double move from Noel, who doesn't see a lot of playing time, but he's a big-bodied receiver, a <laughs> very good basketball player. I know he can dunk. So uh, <laughs> there you go. definitely a strong jump ball receiver as Rudisil comes in to replace him. But he yeah. did what he was supposed to. Yeah. Got them a chunk of yards. 15 uh, yards yeah. on the uh, we'll pass interference. It. We will take it. <laughs> Ref was right there. And it stops the clock. So 21-yard line, 22-yard line, 33 seconds to go, first and 10. Antonuk. Line drive, Rudisil, Rudisil down from his still knees. Still catches the ball. It's a dead ball right there. It's first down. The clock will stop as they move the chains. <laughs> he bobbled it. It fell on his lap, and he still caught it while sitting down on the ground. Fell down on his cut. Heck of a play by Robbie Rudisil in crunch time here as the quarter, as the half, excuse me, winds down. And uh, clockers do take a timeout. So they have one timeout remaining, so nothing is off the table at this point. But they're going to be playing for the end zone. And, 
you know, there's no doubt Andrew uh, Andrew Wolf has the le- Aaron Wolf, Aaron excuse Wolf, me, yeah. has the leg to kick a field goal from here. This is a 28-yard field goal if that's what it comes down to. Still, I mean, you know, 25 seconds. They've got a timeout. You got to think that they're 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 they want it all right here. Yeah, I think they're gonna they're gonna pass. They're gonna target it towards the end zone. So yeah. if he catches it, it's a touchdown. If he doesn't, the clock stops. Yeah, well, with the help of some penalties on the Westwood side, the clockers are inside the 10-yard line of Westwood, or inside the 15, <laughs> knocking on the door of that 10-yard line with 25 seconds to go. It only took them about 40 seconds to get that far. Tyler Pine, the top of the screen, single coverage. They're going to look, look to Rudisil to, in the corner. He's out of bounds. Yep. Catch is made, but clearly out of bounds. There might have been a receiver open on the right side, but Antonick looked to his left the whole way. Pass is going to be incomplete, and it's second and 10 from the same spot. Yeah, it, it took six seconds. We're... The ball is on the left hash mark. Yeah. It's it's, kind, it's, it's a long to throw to play. throw it over to the right side. Yeah. But you also have less space to, to, to run that yeah. fade route. So. Yeah, but that's more on Rudisil. He needs to actually man- manage it. Yeah, yeah, his field awareness. It was good defense as well. Yeah. But he's got to make that cut earlier or yeah, made, further you know, inside. And made, then, made the catch, but, you know. Yeah. A couple, couple feet too far to the left. Now Rudisil's lined up to the top of the screen. Yep. Devin O'Brien, number 11 there as well. Tyler Pine to the inside. Crispin to the right of Cam oh. Antonick in the backfield. O'Brien back down here. Pine goes in motion. Antonick rolling. Throws it underneath. No good. Incomplete pass. That one intended for Tyler Pine. And McKay, 13 seconds. Definitely playing it conservative because I think he knows he's got the field goal attempt in his uh, back pocket. Clock is trailing 15 to 14 with 13 seconds to go in the second quarter. Yeah, it's going to be tough. As you to mentioned before, it was the, uh, the two point conversion on Westwood's opening drive on the fake extra point that. It's paying huge uh, dividends for them right now. Accounting for that uh, one point lead. Yep, going to be tough to Westwood. get the first down without getting a touchdown. So we're thinking end zone shot here from Antonick. Wouldn't be little surprising. confusion on that Westwood defensive line. Run it, keep it. Oh, oh. Antonick's got to get out of bounds. Hard hit. That's going to be a late hit. Do we a, you know, it's a late hit. Three seconds left. It's half the distance. Oh, Here's some fighting. Yep. and uh, Another flag going to be thrown just, on the play. Yeah, that stuff's... It's getting very chippy out there very fast. But ultimately what's going to happen as he gets out of bounds around the 15, 13 yard line, it's going to be half the distance to the goal. And uh, Clockers with 3.4 seconds will have enough time to try a 24, 25 yard field goal. And it might be offsetting, they might be the retaliatory, so it might end up might being uh, Unsportsmanlike conduct on both sides, yes. possibly with that second flag that came in. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of yellow flags being thrown this first half. Hopefully, these teams can clean it up in the second half because it's it's been it's been not gonna lie, it's been a messy game so far. Very very physical. Patty, Patty Deloria down uh, down on the field there. Yeah, a few One of the stars uh, from last year's squad. With what a couple else is there too? Yes, a couple pats. <laughs> Not to be confused with lungs. the New England pats. Yes, these these pats are more effective. Yes, yes, on the football field. Yeah, seriously. Saw the pats got J.C. Jackson back. So a lot of discussion. I wonder if they're, you know, talking about ejections here or something because it should be pretty straightforward as to the penalties, unless there's multiple. Yes, it's on, definitely on dragging team. on. Yeah, refs just got to figure out how to go how to go forward with this at this point. A lot of stuff happened on that play and right after it as well. Uh, let's see. Wow, blindside block, number 54 on the one offense. One penalty. One penalty. They called one penalty. No. It's going to push it back 15 yards. 
and that's that takes them out of field goal range potentially. Now, so Wolf's got a leg, but yeah, it's for, it's a forty-four yard attempt. You got to go for it. So what were He's the other penalties there. just offsetting? Were there there were no other? They penalties? didn't even call the other. They didn't even call the other one. Okay. So Aaron Wolf, the sophomore, looking to connect on a 40, 43 yard based on the spot forty three yard field goal to end the first half. Big moment and here. Put the clockers up sixteen to fourteen if it's good. Does the underclassman have the leg for it? Looks. Come on, just hooked it. Wide left for and, Aaron and a little Wolf. short. Yep. But good effort. <laughs> good try. Yeah, good try. And that brings us to the end of the first half. An exciting one as we had hoped for and uh, Very predicted. Back and forth, yep. But it's the Westwood Wolverines leading the Ashland Clockers here 15 14 at the half. We're going to get a word from our sponsors and uh, we will be back. So uh, don't go away. 126 Self Storage is located at 162 Pond Street and is owned by Ashland native Michael Kane. Gated and fenced with 24-hour security cameras, they offer convenient drive-up storage units for both your residential and commercial needs. Temperature-controlled units and outdoor vehicle, boat, and RV storage is also available. Check them out at 126selfstorage.com. And thank you to Michael Kane for being a great underwriter for WACA's coverage of Ashland High School football games. WACA TV's coverage of tonight's game is sponsored in part by Mr. Handyman, the home improvement professionals. They're your one call solution for a wide range of home maintenance and repair needs performed by fully insured technicians. Located right here in Ashland at 200 Butterfield Drive, give them a call at 508. 231-4639 or request service at mrhandyman.com. Technoplex Healthcare leverages its world-class materials science knowledge to deliver better patient outcomes by designing and manufacturing products that allow for less invasive procedures, reduce pain, enable faster healing, and safer drug delivery. Technoplex is proud to sponsor the 2023 Ashland High football team. Go Today's game is brought to you in part by Townhouse. Pizza, roast beef, subs, and more. Make sure to get your fill with the buffalo chicken calzone that's been called one of the best in the area. Located at 300 Elliott Street in Ashland, give them a call at 508-881-3010 or find them on the web at townhousepizzaroastbeef.com. Today's soccer game is brought to you in part by the Ashland Ale House. With delicious food, a comfortable family atmosphere, and the friendliest service around, the Ashland Ale House is open for both indoor and outdoor seating, as well as curbside pickup. Visit them at ashlandalehouse.com to check out their menu and place an order. All right, everybody, welcome back for second half action here at Ashland High School, the Plateau William Cunis Field. I'm Rob Silver here on WACA TV with my partner tonight, Chase Abrams. Exciting first half, Chase. Absolutely, really about as back and forth as you can get so far tonight. Uh, both teams trading scores early on. A lot of penalties in the first half, it has to be noted. Really, really messy game on both sides of the ball. So we'll see if these teams can kind of clean it up here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, Ashley, Westwood took the kickoff, went down. They scored on their opening drive really easy. It was Toddy, I think, that powered into the end zone. Yep, then the clock was nothing on their two extra point. Two point conversion yeah. was good, 8 nothing. Clockers actually. Two lo tackles for a loss, as and you then would a call pick. TFL, and a pick. <laughs> yep. They held them. Um, and you, you and were a little they, worried at that point, right? Well, I knew, worried. you know, but the, the defensive stand kind of mo motivated them. Yeah. They were able to go down, and uh, ultimately uh, it was a Tyler Pine pass that yep. put them on the board. Extra point was good. Saving Another touchdown in the near corner. Defensive uh, stand, and uh, a little back and forth. Then it was Kevin Ozalumba. The pick six from about the 50-yard line yep. put them ahead. Ozalumba also had the big run to set up that Tyler Pine touchdown. So really yeah, so far he has yards. been, as they say, the, the straw that stirs the drink. 
Kevin Ozalumba, real, real impact player so what, far what tonight. What kind of drink? Oh, the chocolate milk, or the, uh, that's that's what you're referring to, yeah. The quick, Nest, Nestle quick. Anyways, um, and then uh, Westwood with a pretty sustained drive from their, started at their 34-yard line, was able to get into the end zone with a minute 10. Really weird series of events on the next, uh, on the kickoff. Yeah. As they try to... One kick to the left, out of bounds, then this pooch kick, and there was a targeting call. Ashley took over on the 40-yard line. Had a chance first and 10 with 30 seconds left and couldn't do anything with it, and a uh, some Another type of, uh, of unsportsmanlike conduct yeah. uh, penalty gave them a shot at a 43-yard field goal just before the half, but uh, that went a little wide, a little short. Aaron Wolf, good attempt. And that's where we are. So we're about to set to kick off. Ashland will receive here in the second half. Yeah. What's been hurting and both these teams really is not just the penalties, but the, the timing of said penalties. Really, pretty much all of them coming at pretty crucial moments in this game. A lot of third and longs. And a couple of those turned into first downs, really, yeah. by, by some of these penalties. Ozalumba comes up to get that cleanly. Clocker fans will be happy about that. See what he can do with it. Gets into a crowd and knocked down around the 36, 37-yard line for the Clockers, and that's where they're. That is where they will start their first drive of the second half, down one. Yeah, so some good starting position. Again, we want to thank our crew tonight on WACA: uh, Mackie Kota, Brady Montesino, Colin Turner, Alicia Hall, and uh, Jeff Hall. And also want to thank our stats guy tonight. We'll be uh, giving you some stats soon. But uh, Josh Abrams. Oh, see, that name see sounds on the crew familiar. Tonight? That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know he was he was doing this kind of stuff still. Thought he was uh, gonna pass that, but glad to have him with us as they go right back to the gunk formation the only, in the second half. The only way we could get him up on the roof, <laughs> oh, uh, keeps it. Uh, Ozalumba, yeah, excuse me, hand up to Ozalumba, four yards, but looked like really only two Westwood players knew what was going on there, but they were still able to make the play. You gave him about three there for Ozalumba. You can't Ozalumba. just come up to the roof. It's it's basically Josh Restricted Abrams. Restricted access? Yeah. It, it, it's the equivalent of I carried a watermelon. <laughs> What's he doing here? I carried a watermelon. Does he know? Does Chase know? Uh, as a pitch, I think, to uh, Crispin. Let's see. So, uh, yeah, that was Crispin for another four yards. Binoculars coming up clutch there again. It's going to be uh, third, and, third and two. Third and two, just pounding away, wearing them down with this gunk offense. I'm expecting Cam Antonuk to fake the handoff and keep this one himself. Yeah, that little spin move that he showcased before. Could also be that rollout pass that they... They're not Did not have any success. With. Although, actually, it would fool everybody, <laughs> including myself. Crispin bounces off a tackler. He's going to be about uh, he half a yard way. short. He had, it looks he had like. the outside, and he cut it up a little Second early. Second time so. we've seen that happen tonight. They're going to try the quick, hard, hard count as they're short by about Oof. a half a yard. Gunk Fourth. formation again. Yeah. Yep, hard count, unsuccessful. They're going to look to the sideline here. It's like Coach Zakili telling them what to do. So they did go on it, uh, fourth and one from the 50-yard line in the second quarter and made it. This is a pitch to Ozalumba. And he breaks through the pile. Gets through that first line of defense. Another 12 yards after it, and Kevin Ozalumba with another big yeah. run tonight. 14 actually, 14 yards total on that run as he just jumped over a pile of bodies. Westwood, uh, I was surprised. Kind of fortunate yeah. that uh, he didn't find some more room. Surprised they pitched it backwards with that short yardage to go in front of him, but it works out, and then some for the Clockers, and they've got the ball on the Westwood side of the field for the first time this half. So this is interesting. Ozalumba had to come out because his shoe actually came off. See what they run here. O'Brien in the backfield. Anthony fakes the pitch. He's going to keep it himself and roll forward for a couple. Good job, like scooting ahead. He was about to fall, and he just gave himself one more push to get a couple yards. Having a lot of trouble with this shoe.
Yeah, it's being tied right now. He'll be back soon. Okay. Walker stay in the gunk formation. They've had success with it so far. Pitch to Crispin. Up the middle. He's got a lot of room. Great little stutter step there right at the beginning. Found the hole and yeah. burst through it for 10. A lot of patience waiting for the blocks to develop. Yeah, great, great vision there from Jason Crispin. It's been his best run of the night so far. Oz Olympus got the shoe back on, but uh, Andrew McKay decides to go with the players in there, preventing Westwood from substituting. A little hurry up offense, keep the gunk formation going. Seems to be working. Crispin, Crispin again. again, yeah. Some momentum. Four yards, three and a half, four yards. Second and a long six. O'Brien comes out, Ozalumba back in. Second and six. Players all wearing the pink undershirts for breast cancer awareness. Ozalumba gets the handoff, the pitch. Runs through a man and then gets knocked down after the first down. Pass to number 23, Kevin another 13 Kevin. yards. For another Ashland. Down. 13 number yards three. for Ozalumba. That puts him over 100 yards on the night. Ozalumba up to 107 yards. Wow. Well, the clock are rushing off. Shout out to uh, our stats man, Josh Abrams. <laughs> clock are rushing offense refuses to be slowed down right now. And they're inside the 15 of Westwood. Ozalumba again gets the pitch. This time he's met after uh, about three yards. Still Tackled by game. number 10. I believe that's uh, Andrew Weeman. Yep, said his name a lot so far tonight. One of the main contributors from Westwood. But four yards at a, at a uh, carry. Mari Lee checks out for the clockers. Is all the clockers really need. Just wearing them down. It's very disheartening from a defensive standpoint when this offense is run effectively. Crispin taking it wide, cuts it back up. He gets down to about the uh, five, six yard line. A couple Another more yards show. Hunt. A little bit of passing. pressure getting to the quarterback. Out route goes incomplete as the ball comes short. Tyler Pine in coverage on the far sideline, and it's going to be third and very long for this Westwood offense on their first drive of the second half. You know, Hunt's been a very uh, accurate passer, but that particular out route he's missed a few times tonight. That one intended for senior Tom Thomas Warren, Jr. First time I said a class all night, and I get, I get it wrong. Yep. Junior Thomas Warren. <laughs> With third and very long coming up, Ashton go to a nickel formation as Zach Brennan goes on on the field. Nate yeah. Cavanaugh comes out. A couple extra defensive backs out there in a pass heavy in this obvious pass. Devin O'Brien, a free run on the quarterback, forces him to get it get it away. Good job with not, not hitting him after the uh, yeah. pass was released. Looks like maybe a screen pass was being set up there by Westwood, unable to, to complete the pass, though, so we'll never really know what was uh, in store. And it's going to be the first yeah. punt of the game here for, West, as West, uh, for, for both, both teams. Sides, yeah. yeah, both teams. So we mentioned a lot of flags tonight. I, I was watching last week, and you said uh, first oh, punt, and it was like the dad. third or fourth yeah. or something like and that. That was him. Don't don't don't. Oh, was it? <laughs> And that's not going to go anywhere. Gonna Arcing call fire. Fight, but not a lot fire, of distance. Get out of the way. And it bounces the wrong way for Westwood. Back. They've got to stop it before it goes too far. As it is, Aston's going to have it on the 38-yard line and of Westwood. Yeah, that was a net of 12 yards. Oof. Didn't even make it to the first down marker, actually. But Devin O'Brien blowing up that third down play and forcing uh, Hunt to have to get rid of it yeah. quickly. Good call on that. Great instincts by O'Brien on that last play. I didn't give him the, the, the credit he deserves. He he ran right around the yeah. right tackle and no, nobody in front of him. Nobody picked him up. And then he still made the heads there. up play of not yeah. hitting the quarterback late. And guess what formation they're in, Rob? Let's see if Ozalumba takes a step right before the snap. And really, let's see what All Westwood right. can do to stop it. They, they've got number nine right here on the outside of the formation. I don't really see what 
he could it's be Ozolumpa contributing again. there. As Ozolumpa oh, and he really just gets just missed breaking another big tripped run. Tripped up gets the tripped. shoelaces. Yep. Yeah, seven yards. Yep. Six, seven yards. Watch number nine, Samuel Lynch, on this play. If they run another gunk formation, he's he's off to the side. He's close to the near sideline. He's not in the play. And I'm wondering what the what the strategy is behind that because it really like you you want bodies in the mix. I know I know it can work in Ashton's favor, but <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna stop this play, you've got to get bodies Ozolumba. in the box. And he's just standing off to the side here. I don't, I don't really see what he's going to be able to. Twenty yards. False start. Which one are you talking about? Number oh, nine, nine here. Yeah. He's not in the box. He's off to the side. Maybe he's he, he's getting he's, ready for a pass well, or that, something. Well, that's the thing. You, you have to have uh, so legal procedure. Not sure what happened False there. Start. False start. start, five yards. It's going to be uh, second and second and nine. Well, first penalty of the second half. They do. They do run uh, Crispin. From that side, yeah. coming out that way. So they're looking at that. Same play. Ozoloma breaks it to the outside. He's got one guy to beat. And he's tackled by oh. number three, Andrew Donegan. Not as big a tackle as somebody's only made after, tonight. only uh, after a gain yeah. of 16 yards and Donnegan, a first yeah. down. Donegan just saved uh, saved his team from a third. <laughs> Ozalumba touchdown, second rushing touchdown as he looked like he yeah. was heading to the end zone there. Ozalumba, great vision, able to find just a tiny hole and just explode through that defensive line. He's up to uh, almost 140 yards on the night. Unquestionably the player of the game so far. Sorry to, sorry to spoil it for the, the silver star at the, the end. The silver medal, yeah. Ozalumba, a little shake and bake, pushes ahead for four yards. And th these uh, these two drives just devouring the clock as we uh, tick under three minutes here in the third quarter. Ashland Clark is up 22 to 15, looking to expand on that lead as they face a second and six on the 15 yard line of Westwood. Gunk offense, all of a sudden, Chase Abrams' favorite offensive set <laughs> ever. Hey, Ozalumba cuts back. He stays on his feet. He's going to make it into the end zone for another touchdown. His balance is really, really impressive, especially you can see it on that play, cutting through, splitting a gap, and staying on his feet as he crosses the goal line. Broke three arm tackles en route to his second rushing. Slow to get up for uh, the Wolverines. Might be a cramp. He's, yeah, he's waving, he's waving like, uh, I'm okay. Just... Uh, don't want to get beat up anymore, so I'm gonna say I have a crit. No, I'm just kidding. These guys, these guys are tough. It's been a long game. They've been, they've been on the field for a while. Yeah, you so. kidding? You and I are sore from standing in the I on top of the you, press box. I told you, I got cramps <laughs> on my on my arches. Yeah, it's tough to do what they do, for sure. But yeah, well, take taking a look at the uh, TVL standings. This is our first game, and Westwood's first game. But Norwood, uh, four and one overall, two and zero. Oh, in the TVL, uh, they had a 34 nothing win a couple weeks ago against Medfield. And then last night's huge uh, come-from-behind win, 25-24 over Holliston. And we know how impressive that Holliston team usually is. Yeah, and um, yeah, Holliston now at 2-3, and three, but they played some tough opponents. Mm. So the they're, record they're not good indicative, team. similar they're to Bellingham yep. last week, yep. you know, the record not indicative. Well, Bellingham was just a special case where they, they'd, they'd lost their three games by five. a combined five points. And exactly. I'm sure you heard us say it yeah. countless I times, looked, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just like, I mean, you feel like Ashland could be undefeated too, Bellingham as well, but yep. a lot of parity in the league. Some good teams. Good way to uh, say it. Ashland milking the clock. Antonick is going to keep it himself here. Spins ahead for 10 yards. Look at him fighting for that extra yard. Love to see it, even Think with the big they're lead. Gonna give him the first, no, yeah. just short of the first down, maybe a half a yard. Yeah, I felt like his knee was down a little bit before that elbow Couldn't came down and the ball was outstretched. Hopkinton at four and one. They're one and zero. Oh. They uh, won last night at home against Medfield, twenty-one fourteen. Um, you now Medfield is two and three on the season, zero oh and two in the TVL. So, uh, and then Holliston zero oh and one. So, 
I mean, Medfield competitive against that Hopkinton team last night. Hopkinton beat Whalen. We lost to Whalen, so transitive property. You just you just don't know. That's why they play the games. But yep. right now it's the Clockers leading 28-13 with 8.30 to go. Pitch to Ozalumba. He loves to go back to the uh, the other side. Well, this I mean, time, it seems uh, to have had some success needed, so far yeah. tonight. Exactly. Uh, this time. Yeah, couldn't get anything. Westwood defense holds on second down, brings up third and one. They have not run a play outside of the, like, with a different formation. Antonuk keeps it, pushes forward <laughs> for a yard and a half and a first down. They have not run a play with a different formation at all this half. And why would they? Westwood signaling for, like, a little confusion on the, on the field. I don't know if they're signaling for Bumble or they think they stopped him, but he definitely had the forward progress. At least from our perspective here. Not really sure what I feel like they're the conference is for. A terrible spot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Look to Andrew that's Weeman to uh, tell you where to spot the ball. <laughs> that's that's great. Nope. Oh. No, that's a first. Come on. Oh, Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Time. Weeman did his best, Rob, but uh, really can't argue with stone cold results. Yeah. I, I had the binoculars. Uh, An Antonuk was. was yeah, well, up, well up the well up the pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without touching the ground because he was on top of players. So, so the clock continues to run. They pitch to Crispin, who looks for a hole, bounces it up the field for about five yards. Yeah, he had blockers on the outside there, so you know I'm going to agree with you on this one. Maybe he should have kept it outside because man, it looked like he had a little bit of a group in front of him, but uh, stays inside, still gets what five there so can't really yeah. can't really be too mad about five yards on a first down run and the clockers will run it back they've taken a lot of time off this clock as there's 642 and counting <laughs> to go in the game I mean really they've moved it about 20 yards in three minutes oh. so really just yep. perfect execution by coach McKay right now another pitch to Crispin Hey, and another working. five and a half, six yards. Let's see if they give him the first two. This one's this, a little more debatable. Right. This spot was like right in the middle. Making the refs work work tonight. Good spot. And that's going to be, that should be enough, enough see, for a first. There's been a lot of right close on the line. That one's right on the line, a lot I think. Of, yeah. A lot of close ones because they, they didn't mark the first down on the hash mark. So they're in between. That's it's close It's kind of hard to gauge it. It's they're, fine. They're it's gonna another 30 seconds off the clock, yeah. 35 seconds, sure. 552 and counting. They don't Antonin go with the QB keeps sneak it. this time. Plenty of, oh, the it's penalty. Hold, probably. Anton stand on his feet for a little longer before he's finally taken down. Now going to play. And welcome back. I know we had some technical difficulties. Yep, sorry about that. A uh, huge shout out to our production guy, uh, Jeff Hall, getting yes. us back up and running. This is our maestro tonight. So we have a flag on the play. Uh, Ashland leading 28-15, 5.36 to go. Clock stopped. Trying to figure out what the, what the call is. Well, in case you're just joining us, which I guess most of you are, we're going to wait for this call. It's going to go against Another the clockers. Another false start, illegal motion. Something. Clockers have a 28 to 15 lead with 5.36 to go in the fourth quarter. They've done. They've gotten this big lead on the back of Kevin Ozalumba with his two rushing touchdowns, two interceptions, one of them a pick six in uh, <laughs> one of the most complete performances I've ever seen from a National High School player, and this coming from just a sophomore. Number 23 has had a heck of a game for the clockers here tonight as we face a third and five from the clocker 36. Can't say third and five, it's gotta be third and six, otherwise they would have the first down. <laughs> I guess so. So. Will the gunk formation be good for six here? Pitch to Crispin. 
He's got plenty of room. You think they're gonna give him the first for that one, Rob? Crispin carries it for 13 yards and a first down. Why don't I just actually mention a couple things? Oh, that's right, I gotta check out. Um, I moved to Natick recently. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, about two months now. So I had I hired a handyman, not Mr. Handyman. I gave him a list of about six things I needed done. I just stopped by the place on my way over. And he only had completed items uh, one, three, and five. Turns out he only does odd, odd jobs. jobs. Yep. Yeah. How did I know? Yeah, exactly. You know, you don't. That's know. why just you because my use dad does it. It doesn't mean you have to, right? We we do it to honor your dad. Oh, that's that great. Is, you know, I'm so glad. That's why you got to use Mr. Handyman in Ashland. Absolutely. He gets it all done. And uh, Crispin Chris, with another huge burst. He's going to be near a first there, nine yeah. or ten yards on the first down carry. Gotta and thank. once again, uh, really just an arm tackle away from a long touchdown. 126 Self Storage, located at 162 Pond Street, sponsoring us tonight. Owned by uh, Ashland resident Michael Kane, gated and fenced with 24-hour security cameras. They offer convenient drive-up storage units for both residential and commercial vehicles. Temperature controlled units, outdoor vehicles, boat and RV storage also available at that time of year. Check them out at 126selfstorage.com. Thanks, Michael Kane, for being a great sponsor of Ashland football. I'll get the next one at the after this play. Amari Lee behind Antonick in the backfield there. Goes to Crispin. Crispin getting the uh, bulk of the action here. That goes nowhere. It's going to be tackled and, uh, for no game. Our last sponsor. <laughs> Today's sports coverage on WACA TV is sponsored in part by Techniplex Healthcare. Techniplex Healthcare leverages its world-class materials and science knowledge to deliver better patient outcomes by designing and manufacturing products that allow for less invasive procedures, reduce pain, enable faster healing, and safer drug delivery. Techniplex Healthcare is a proud sponsor of the Ashton Boys football team and looks forward to a great 2023 season. And uh, once again, we'll, we'll give a shout out to uh, Townhouse Pizza. I'm craving that grape soda right now. Yeah, I'm deprived I'm of not. sugar. I know you're not. <laughs> this one Whoa, goes to oh, Ozalumba. Misdirection. And he's still, still going. Great job keeping his balance and pushing ahead for four <laughs> yards. And Townhouse, as we said, pizza, subs, roast beef, and more. Be sure to fill up with the Buffalo Chicken Calzone, endorsed by our own Dylan Drozak. Yes. And uh, that's been called one of the best in the area, located at 300 Elliott Street in Ashland. Give them a call at 508-881-3010. Find them on the web at townhousepizzaroastbeef.com. And that concludes our wonderful lineup of sponsors. Just on that previous play, Westwood accidentally, really, in the backfield on that misdirection play, but in the backfield, no less. Ozalumba still able to trip forward for about four or five. Third and six. Crispin, again, wrapped up quickly. Had some players no, helping him out, but no he's going to get no gain. 213. I just want to give count. a quick shout out. Um, well, we have a, another stop in the action timeout as they decide what to do on fourth down. But uh, Ashland Sports this week. Men's soccer had two wins this week. Uh, one nothing shutout at home against Dedham. And then they went to uh, Dover Sherburn and uh, won 2 nothing out there. Team having a tremendous season under coach Tiago Moto. Currently at eight, two, and one. Yes, they are a team on a mission this year. That boys' soccer team. Women, women's soccer under Coach Jeff Allen. They suffered the exact opposite fate as they lost two nothing at uh, on the road and four nothing this week to Dedham End over Sherburn. Their record stands at one seven and one, but they look to finish the season with a strong second half. Our golf team, three losses this week, but prior to that they'd been on fire, having won ten matches in a row under Coach Mike Roman. Currently, the team stands at an impressive 10-5 and five mark. Field hockey, the Molly Foley coach squad lost a tight one to Dover Sherburn, one nothing on Monday, bringing their record to 2-5-2 and two on the year. And volleyball, you... Uh, I was on the call for the game against Medway on with Monday. With your dad and your mom. Yes, yeah. And, Almost uh, a full Abrams a nice family win. affair. Yeah, 3-1 over uh, Medway, and they dropped three straight sets to Gonquin Regional yesterday. Yes. It's a young volleyball team this yeah. year for the Clockers, but they look to, uh, I guess, kind of develop yep. this year, and they're going to be really, four, really strong next year. Four and seven record. They have nine matches remaining, so Coach Ray LeBay looking to rally the troops for a yep. playoff berth. They are in playoff position right now. They're just one of the lower seeds. Anthony's going to keep it himself. He a defender was there, but he the dekes him out anyway. Wow. Takes a big hit as he goes for the first down. He's going to be close. We'll see where this spot oh, puts he him. He definitely made it. There He's we go. He's beyond the 30. Great job by Cam Antonuk to Heck put of a the run. 
exclamation point on the uh, that, on the evening. I mean, 2:02 to yeah. go, 28-15. This game was pretty much over, but that run iced it. Cam Antonick with a gutsy run, physical and, and fast. I can't I can't talk about the sports without mentioning cross country. Of course, you want me to chip in for this that's, one? That's I know you guys are two and two. Chase being a uh, it was senior night last night? Yes, it was. It was a lot of fun. Really, really grateful to everybody who uh, contributed to this. Flag is another flag, flag gets yeah. thrown on the play. Uh, yeah, the boys' team is 2-2. Two and two. It's been a really, really strong year. And we had an interesting uh, discussion recently about uh, how we were going to attack the rest of the season. We've got one meet remaining. It's against Holliston. It's in Holliston, the boys' yeah, team. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. And uh, two days after that, so it's, it's on Wednesday in Holliston, and then Friday is the Twilight Invitational meet that's in Falmouth. And that's all... That's all I saw there was uh, ten team. Is that the one on October twenty eighth? No, that, that's that? TVLs. TVLs. So okay. To if if, if we win this meet in Holliston this this week, we yep. will be we will or on Wednesday. Excuse me. Ashland Boys Cross Country will finish third place in the TVL for the first time in I can't tell you how many years. And Good that is you. what we've decided nice. to do. We're gonna we're gonna attack Holliston on Wednesday and we're gonna try to come away with that with that top three finish in the TVL. And you've had some recently some personal bests? A couple, yeah. yeah. I, I, I PR'd in the three K at Rentham uh, this past weekend, so that felt I, pretty good. And I know uh, was it Mike Temple had a uh, 5K under 19 minutes, I think, a personal best. Was that? Yeah, we've had we've had a lot of PRs this season. And I couldn't Will I couldn't tell Will you specifically. Will Child well continues, continues to be. To yeah. continues to be just, he? he's, he's a junior. He's yeah. a junior. Luca Domestico is a freshman. Those are our top two runners. So really, really good. Uh, the the future of Ashton Cross Country is in good good hands and I guess legs really. A minute 39 to go, and it's uh, all under the tutelage of Coach Sharon Ames. Tutelage of Coach Sharon Ames. We have Coach John Brenniger and Coach Emily Riley as well being. Super, super helpful. And the, the girls, cross country, girls cross country, one and three on the season. Yep, one against Norwood. That was uh, a Norwood Another win for both boys and girls. Yeah. So we got it all in there. That's that's great. So uh, we'll be like we said, we'll be back next week. To face the uh, powerhouse Norwood squad. Yeah. So I think I saw when I was watching the uh, replay last night, they had a couple di uh, different plays. Three. I think there were three different people that actually threw a pass. They did a oh, halfback wow. option. The regular quarterback obviously threw. And then on that fourth and 12 that I had talked about, I yeah. think it was a handoff to some running back oh, wow. uh, from the I formation, and he just kind of he threw it. But, yeah, so um, just real quick on this this previous play, Antonick was sacked for a big gain, but of course it was all erased because Westwood had an unnecessary roughness penalty on the same play. So Ozalumba looking to get the hat trick. Oh, he's got the hat he's trick. Got the, he's got the offensive the, hat trick. Uh, the offensive hat trick, yeah, exactly. Kevin is that another time, the, the last time out called by Westwood? Clock is stopped. Yep. Oh, Westwood. Westwood, Westwood calling time out. their third time, I mean, third and final, I believe. I don't know what the thought process is between behind that timeout to be honest this with you. This game is over. There's a minute it's 15 right. to go. It's it's two scores. I don't really I don't really get it. It's 28 to 15. Ozalumba currently with 161 yards on the night. On offense. On uh, offense. Two interceptions on defense, including about a 56-yard pick six. Crispin 77. up to 77 yards. Strong running night for Jason Crispin as well. Yeah, just pounding away. And Cam Antonuk, three of seven. Oh, zero passing attempts in the second half. He, he didn't need to. Gunk formation the whole time. He's had a couple gutsy runs here in the second half, but they haven't needed his arm. Yep. Antonick for 29 rushing yards, but a really, really big one on the previous fourth down to get them the first and really the game. Yeah, and the game, <coughs> excuse me, in the game against Neshoba, I think they had over 300 yards on the ground. Going to be one, close Crispin. to that tonight. Crispin cutting it back inside, fighting for the end zone. They're going to mark him just short. But, you know, you can't say anything about running up the score because Westwood called the timeout. I yeah. don't understand why they I did just, that. It's just like, oh, and, and now they, clock and now, is stopped and again. And this is what I hate about it. Now you have an injury. And it's a Westwood player. No, it's a, it's a clocker. Oh, that is might a clocker. It might even right. be Crispin. Okay. He took the helmet off under his own power. I, 
I, I, I mean, I, I, I understand the, the running of the play because Westwood basically baited you into it because they called the timeout. But has Westwood timeout not called silly. the timeout, we're going to take Game's a knee. Over. Game's over. But at some point, you, you almost have to say, you know what, let me be the bigger man and just take a knee. I've seen it happen too many times. Um, still, still early on in the season, plenty yeah. of time oh, this, to, to make up some ground. Yeah, definitely move him up a lot. Absolutely, and uh, a quality win, quality win. I, I, th I think I'd we say can say it's a win. I think we can call it that. This is probably this is definitely their best win of the the season. I've they, been they very beat impressed. A, yeah, they beat a Dover Sherburn team that was unproven in the first week, and they really haven't gone on to do too much to, you know, get back to their form of last year. Antonuk. Takes the hand keep off, it himself. trying to push really forward. Really getting nowhere. And there's the signal. Finally, finally he gets in there. Yep. Westwood coach is throwing furious. His hat. Throwing his hat. I, I'm guessing he probably wanted a quicker whistle, maybe thinking uh, that the momentum forward, had progress. Been, forward yeah. progress had been stopped, but they let it go. The pie was still moving. Nobody had him wrapped up. So... Cam Antonuk gets on the board. And actually, uh, I think it was Cam Antonuk. I see yeah. Omari Lee celebrating, but he was basically the reason why Antonuk got in. And uh, the Wolf yep. boots it through. 35-15. Right through. And this Ashland squad is fired up. Impressive, impressive win. After trailing eight nothing, just really, really dominated on both sides of the ball in the second half. Wow. Yeah, we talked about how that first Westwood drive never really felt that great, and really, no drive after it did either. And the Clockers just steamrolled them in the second half, outscoring them in this in this half twenty one to nothing. We came in; it was fifteen fourteen. You look over now and it's 35-15 in favor of the Clockers. So not only a big offensive half, but defense throws a goose egg on the board, holding Westwood to no points in the second half. And you you mentioned it earlier, the uh, silver medal of the tonight definitely goes to Kevin Ozalumba. No surprises here. Yeah, just an incredible all-around performance. One of the best I've seen. Offense, yeah. defense, I mean, special teams. We mentioned it. Now look at this. Oh, little oh. miscommunication from Westwood. That one's nearly recovered by the yeah. Clockers. Hope the players are okay. They're both yeah, up. Exactly. That's what you just don't want to see anything, you know, like that at the end of the game. 38.3 seconds. Credit to Ashton for playing to the whistle, but uh, 38 seconds to go. Yeah. And, and as big as the uh, first interception for the pick six was, the second interception, you could Arguably, almost make an yeah. argument that it was even bigger as, uh, you know, Ashland had just gone up 22-15. It looked like Westwood was going to march down on three plays. They went 50, 60 yards and, you know, were just having their way with Ashland passing the ball. And uh, Ozalumba just stepped in at the 10-yard line and picked it off. Just killed any any chance, any momentum at all. There's a nice pass to uh, Crowley again. Si high Just steps get it out of down, the, uh, down the sideline. Gets to the 42-yard line. Yeah, found a soft oh. spot in the coverage uh, along that far sideline. Excuse me, that was Warren. Yeah. Thomas Warren, I said Went Crowley. like 25 yards after the catch, yeah, I too. Yeah, Crowley, so. who's number 11. Apologies. Um, okay. Ozalumba, 17 11, same thing. Ozalumba came off a little, little gippy on that. And uh, Hunt. He was the one making the, the tackle flat. there. That Jacob Friels forcing uh, him out of bounds. So yeah. another six seconds get taken off the clock. Westwood now <coughs> inside the clocker 35. Weeman on the receiving end of that pass. Ozalumba still on the field, by the way. Oh, did he go back out there? Er, nope. He's, he's on the sideline right now. Yeah. They're putting in some of the some of the backups for that reason alone. Hey, if they give As up a score, they yeah. give up a score. Too many men on the field. See if they call it. Matt Terry breaks through. We a see a wide, lot of room wide there. open halfback That's screen. Uh, you wonder why they didn't call this earlier. Well, it, it is the backup. They they were way out of uh, they were in disarray yeah. on defense. 
They actually had too many men on the field and <laughs> didn't call it. Yeah. As uh, Dan I did. Dante Martucci takes the short pass and runs another 23 yards down to the uh, seven, eight yard line. 13 seconds to go. It's funny. I saw Matt Terry <coughs> break through the Westwood offensive line and then and then halt for a second as I think he realized why he got through the defense, the offensive line so easily. Saw the moment of realization for him. A little bit of confusion on the field right now. Ozalumba back in there, maybe to get the third interception. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. He's going that way. It's knocked down. Yeah, you've been calling for one of those earlier this game. Big Nate Cavanaugh gets in the way of that pass. Big Nate Cavanaugh. PA announcer agrees yeah. with me there. <laughs> that seems to be the consensus. Hey, I mean, not can't Nate disagree Kavanaugh, with that. Big Nate Cavanaugh. Six foot six, no joke. It's a monster on both lines for them. 10.2 seconds to go. Hunt has some time. <laughs> and he's tackled. That's going to run out the clock as the uh, Ashland defense holds. They're hurrying to try to get a three, snap off. 1.2. They spike the ball. Yeah, There's not a enough flag time. on the play. Let's, the let's just end it. Just end it. Exactly. They had Come a player on. in the backfield. They didn't give Ashland time to. This game's I, over. They could call it on Ashland and then allow one more untimed play. I mean, I guess. But they weren't set either. The the uh, Westwood guy wasn't set. It, so like it's, it's almost you, you like you simply at, at this level you simply they do, six gonna, seconds is not enough up. time to run a play like that. I mean, it, it, it wasn't. It was wasn't less than even, six seconds. Exactly. That's the thing. And they had one guy back at was the down. fifteen yard like, line. Come on. Okay, sure. No, they they're gonna give. <laughs> Why not? Let, just, let's get a sack here. They don't they don't understand. It's and they're they're, okay. they're calling offsides. Sure. False start, offsides, offsetting. Yeah, that's Game's the game. Over. That's the game. Nope. There's two. Se okay. What? They're saying there are two seconds left on the clock. Go figure. It's 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 a. Uh, just, uh, now, 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 an interception would be would be even even better. That was a, that was a completed pass, correct? Whatever they were doing, it was a completed pass. The yes. clock should be running. <laughs> it's, they they is, spiked is, it, but they they called a false start on a right. spike. But the, and right. there was also a player who was ten yards behind the line of scrimmage. Right, so they don't have any more timeouts. I don't, I don't understand why, they're, why, this, why this play is being run. Okay. There it is. They, they blew it dead. They blew it dead. Game is over. All right. <laughs> Much ado about nothing. <laughs> well, so. after a couple uh, miscommunications, weird calls, really weird game, but back and forth up until the start of the second Round half where the clockers just dominated. Really a heck of a game on both sides of the ball from Kevin Ozalumba specifically, but really this entire Clockers team. They come out of the plateau with a win, 35-15, to 15, your final score here at Ashland High School. Rob, any final thoughts? No, just like we've already mentioned it a bunch of times, but the scoring started off by Tyler Pine. Pick six by Ozalumba. That was the scoring in the first half. They trailed 15-14 and then shut them out 21-0. On uh, Ozalumba Oza rushing Lumba touchdown, Ozalumba rushing touchdown, and yep. Cam Antonick and Cam Antonick. on the QB keeper. So uh, Ashland goes to one and zero in the in the Tri Valley Large. They'll face Norwood next week, who's two and zero uh, and coming, you know, standing right now uh, atop the TVL at two and zero, four and one record. So it should be a, a great, great game, a huge challenge for the Glockers, but. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's been a pleasure, Chase. And, yep, me uh, too. Want to uh, thank our crew again: Alicia Hall, Jeff Hall, yep, Brady Mackie Montesino, Kotob. Mackie Kotob, and Colin Turner. Good memory. And our stats guy tonight, Josh Abrams. Josh Abrams. You guys have a great weekend next week. I know it's a it's a big one. Hope you uh, have a great time. We'll miss you on the mic. Yes, thank yeah. you. And uh, that'll wrap it up here from Ashland High School, the Plateau, William Punis Field. Final score, your Ashland Clockers 35, your Westwood Wolverines 15. On behalf of my partner, Chase Abrams, I'm Rob Silver saying good night and go Clockers. We'll see you next time. <laughs>